All right, guys, welcome back to Culture Corner, and we're looking at Unit Ten E. If you open up your books, and the title for today is Poor You, and this is a very interesting topic that we're going to cover for today. If you guys can have a look at the pictures, we see some of um, the interesting pictures at hand. A guy laying in the sun, busy getting sunstroke. Um, someone losing their passport, someone getting sick, someone who has been recently in an accident, um, someone who had their luggage stolen, and lastly, someone who misses their flight, and someone who's lost their way. Seems like someone was in another country or missed the directions, and these are the seven pictures that we're going to look at. The title for today is Poor You. Um, so we will be expressing some um, heartfelt shame to those individuals who have lost something or something happened to them. All right, and moving on, we can look at some of the vacation problems that some of the people experience while going away. If you guys um, visited and traveled to some of the nice places, and I know that um, some of you will go away and local and visit the local places. Please do not be victim to one of these um, events that takes place over here, but look after yourself and have a very nice um, holiday, if I can put it to you that way. All right, so getting sunstroke, I'll play the audio, listen and repeat, and then you guys can say it in your own language. Obviously, I cannot hear you, so this is an activity that you have to do on yourself. So I will play the audio and then you listen to each and every uh, audio piece that I'm going to play. Get sunstroke. Lose your passport. Get seasick. Have an accident. Have your luggage stolen. Lose your way. Miss your flight. All right, so I'm gonna say it again. First picture, um, repeat, get sunstroke. All right now, sunstroke happens when you sit in the sun and you tan, that's what they call it. Um, your skin turns a darker color, but you are also exposed to sunstroke and sun heat. And this can also result in cancer if you are not very um, cautious. Um, some people like to tan in the sun and it can be good, but it can also be very bad for yourself. And secondly, we have lose your passport, get seasick, have an accident, have your luggage stolen, lose your way and miss your flight. Right, so these are the seven pictures that we're looking at and our topic for today is vacation problems as well as poor you. Right, having gone on, have you ever experienced any of these problems while on vacation? Tell your partner and obviously you can uh, phone your teammates and school friends via Skype or WhatsApp or even have video calling with them and you can practice some of these things with them just to have a little bit of practice of the English language and then we can move on because this activity requires some interaction of which I do not have with you at the moment. Right, listen at and repeat. These are some of the phrases that we use when someone had a really bad experience. So I want you guys to listen. I will go through it again, but I'll play the audio clip for you first. Should I tell you all about it? Don't make me too jealous. My dad also lost his wallet. I hope it didn't ruin your vacation. How was your vacation? No, not at all. Right, so listen and repeat. I will go through the phrases again, just as a little bit of a refresher. Right, first one being, should I tell you about it? Right, next one, 
don't make me too jealous and then moving on my dad also lost his wallet I hope it didn't ruin your vacation I hope it did not mess up and spoil your vacation right how was your vacation and no not at all Right now, we will put all of these words into context in the next phrase as we listen to a dialogue. And moving on, you guys can practice this to improve your English. All right, listen and read the dialogue. Um, I always stress this when I talk about dialogues that a dialogue is between two people, or are between two people, and a monologue is one person talking alone so a dialogue are between two people and we see Andrew and Liz have a conversation and the conversation I will not tell you what the conversation is all about we will listen to the audio and then we will take it from there So Liz, how was your vacation? It was fantastic. Should I tell you all about it? Yes. Don't make me too jealous though. First, we visited Spain. It was beautiful. I took lots of pictures and I loved the Spanish cuisine. Then we traveled by boat to Italy, but I got seasick. My dad also lost his wallet. Ah, that's awful. I hope it didn't ruin your vacation. No, not at all. Italy was fantastic. The people there are very friendly. You have to go to Rome someday. Yes, I'd like to. Maybe next year. Let's go together then. All right, and that's the end of our audio track that I played. And as you guys have seen what happens in the story over here, this girl Liz went to visit Spain and then she went on a cruise ship but then she got a little bit seasick and her dad also lost his wallet. But that did not spoil her vacation because they went on and they had a really awesome time in Spain. Alright, so Andrew and Liz and Liz is giving Andrew a little bit of a detail of what happened on her vacation all right moving on to the next slide right so we have some questions about the dialogue in at the moment and we are going to answer these questions question number one where did Liz go as we can see number one Liz went to Spain and Italy all right interesting vacation that she had so what happened to her? She got seasick, seasick on the boat to Italy. All right. One of the things that I would never ever even dream upon. Someone, and it's a bad feeling, if someone gets seasick, really bad. Right, so what happened to her dad? Well, he lost his wallet. Quite an unfortunate event, but as she says, it was really fantastic and the people were friendly so hopefully she got her wallet back or her dad all right moving on to the next slide right and this is my favorite time when we do everyday english so we need to find words or phrases in the text which has the same meaning as the words that they provide for example it was amazing and we need to find phrases in the text that means the same as it was amazing if we go to the list of words i can only imagine Liz saying that it was fantastic All right number two that's terrible which i can only imagine andrew saying when he says that's very awful All right Okay, and not really is Liz's response to Andrew's statement, and I can say that it means no, not at all. Looking at the last one, I may try it next year. 
All right, and I think the correct response is yes, I'd like to maybe next year. All right, and those are the phrases in the dialogue that has the same meaning with the phrases that they provide for us. Um, I always encourage us whenever we do activities for you guys to do it first and then we can do it together afterwards so you can just pause the video and then you can just do the activity and then afterwards we can do it together. Right, say the sentences below in your language then read the dialogue aloud in pairs. Obviously this activity we cannot do at the moment but I encourage you to do it in your own language first so you can have some practice and then do it in English as well. So should I tell you about it? Here we have the sentence. Don't make me too jealous. My dad also lost his wallet. I hope it didn't ruin your vacation. How was your vacation? And no, not at all. So these are the six sentences that you need to say in your own language. Have a practice with it with your friends and see how you guys can manage this little activity. All right, moving on. Okay, portfolio, work in pairs. Your friend is back from vacation. I want you to imagine that you just went on holiday anywhere in the world that you can think of. Use the sentences below to act a dialogue similar to the one on the right. So this is the dialogue and use the sentences to act out a dialogue that's similar to this. So this activity we cannot do at the moment, but this is a really nice activity for you guys to do with your friends. So you can WhatsApp or Zalo or phone them even if you would like to, and you can act out. Most important is what I want, would like you to do is record yourself so you can listen to yourself and improve on your English as well. All right, and then we go to the last part, and that is intonation and expressing sympathy. All right, expressing sympathy is something that we say to someone that something bad happened to them, and we really sympathize, we feel sorry for them. Okay, so if someone hurt themselves, we don't say that's really good. We say that, oh, shame, I hope you get better. So we feel a little bit sad on their behalf, and we hope them all of the best. All right, so expressing sympathy. Today we're talking a little bit about intonation. Now, what is intonation? All right, sometimes when we say sentences, we stress certain words. All right, we stress certain words in a sentence. For example, look at the first sentence. All right, so what a shame. All right, look at the underlined word, and the underlined word is shame. So what does it mean? It simply means if you listen to my voice, how I'm going to say this, and you listen to the intonation, where does my voice go a little bit up, and where does it go a little bit down, and where does my voice stay the same. So I'll do it with my hand as a gesture so you guys can see. What a shame. Can you see what I do? What a shame. So my voice goes up when I say the word shame. So listen to the stress syllables, I'll play it. What a shame. And I'll play it again for number one. What a shame. All right, as you can uh, hear and notice that the lady or the guy that's speaking, his voice goes up when he mentions the word shame. So he would say, what a shame, All right? So his voice goes up. And that's the whole thing behind intonation. So now we'll have a little bit of an activity and you guys will get to say where does the voice or intonation happen. All right, word number two. How awful. All right, did you spot that? I'll play it again. How awful. All right, and if you guessed it, it happens at the beginning at, of the word awful. Right, so we say how awful, and if you listen closely to my voice, you'll notice that my the intonation goes up when I say all. So I say how awful. All right, listen to the next one. That's terrible. And if you guys guessed it, 
it's at the first sound of the word terrible all right it's at the first part of the word terrible going to the next one that's so annoying and i'll play it again that's so annoying right. if you didn't guess it right it's at the part where he says noise so we look at the word annoying so he will say that's so annoying and he stresses and he stresses the noise part of the word in annoying all right and the last one number five that's unfortunate and i'll play it again that's unfortunate and if you've guessed it correctly you would have noticed that the intonation starts on the four part of the word unfortunate. All right, and that's the end of the access book. Moving along, we can go to our workbook. All right, going back, listen to the audio, and then we can have. Ah, there we go, Unit 10 E. We start off with listening in our workbook. I'll play the audio and you fill in the correct answers as we go along. So I'll play the audio first. You listen and you fill in A, B, C right up until F. All right, so I'll play the audio first. Unit 10 E. Exercise 1, page 76. Speaker 1. I was having a great time until I became the victim of a pickpocket. I lost a lot of money. Luckily, my traveler's checks were back at the hotel. Speaker 2 I love lying on the beach and sunbathing, but this year I overdid it. I was dizzy and felt very sick for a couple of days. Speaker 3 I thought we had plenty of time. But we got stuck in traffic on the way to the airport, and by the time we got there, it was too late. Speaker 4. We had been out for dinner in a small village in the mountains. It was lovely, but when it got dark, the roads looked different, and we didn't have a clue how to get back to the hotel. Speaker 5. It was my first time on a cruise, and my last. I was ill the whole time. Speaker 6. When we rented the car, they said we would have no problems taking it across the country. Nevertheless, we hit a bump in the middle of a field and got stuck there for hours waiting for the tow truck. All right, and that's the end of the audio. And if you listened, you had to match the speaker to the problem that they had. So when we look at speaker number one, what problem did they have? Well, the correct answer for this is E, speaker one's wallet got stolen. Right. If you guys did not get it right, you can pause the video and just go back and listen to it again. And then you can fill in the correct answers. All right. Number two, what happened to speaker two? He got sunstroke. Speaker number three missed the flight. Speaker number four lost their way speaker number five got seasick and speaker number six's car broke down all right so if you did not get that i'll repeat it again speaker number one which is e two c three a four f five d and six b Right, and that concludes the end of the listening for number one, and we can go on to the everyday English reading part. Right, so circle the correct response, and the response that I want is either A or B. So the question at hand is, how was your vacation? So how do we respond to that? Can we say that it's bad or it was a nightmare? right and the correct response b it was a nightmare number two oh no we had a flat tire and then the correct response for that is that's terrible so that will be a number three i got sunstroke and what is the correct response for that can we say oh poor thing or that's great news 
and the correct response for that is A04 thing. Number four, it looked as we've lost our way. Can we say it's A or B? What a shame or that's annoying. And the correct response that we can have for number four is that's so annoying. Okay, because nobody would like to lose their way. All right, moving on to number five. You have to go to Poland someday. And the correct response to that will be B, maybe next year. All right. And that concludes it for number two. And we have a beautiful picture here at hand. Seems like it's in Spain. And we can go on. Moving on to number three. Replace the underlined phrases with the phrases from the list. We have four phrases. That's awful. That's all. I wish you had come. And let's go together. So what are we supposed to do? We have a sentence. It's a pity you didn't come and we need to, re to um, replace it with the phrases okay so number one it's a pity you didn't come i wish you had come with us All right so number two oh that is not good so that is not good which is the underlined word we need to replace with the phrases All right and we can say that's awful so for number two we can say that's awful right for number three come with me all right and if you've noticed that we've already completed two there's so there's only two left so come with me we can say let's go all together all right and number four no not really and the correct response for this is no not at all all right if you guys got that right good job and if not not the end of the world so don't stress about it okay moving on to number four complete the exchanges using the words from the list above all right so we have terrible awful annoying and luck and we need to slot all of these in the sentences at hand. So number one, I wish you would stop talking. All right, so I can say, I agree. He is very terrible, awful, annoying, or luck. And the correct response to slot in is annoying. All right, John had a car accident. And we can say either that's awful or terrible. So whichever, which we can use any one of these two to slot in at B. Right, I've missed my flight. We can say that's bad, what? Bad, awful, terrible, annoying, or luck. And we say that's bad luck. Someone took my bag, and we can now say that that's awful or terrible as well. Any one of these two will suffice for number four as well as number two all right moving on to our last part okay replace the words in bold with the opposites in the list we have short ordinary terrible and cool all right and we need to replace it with the words in bold so the words in bold are special long warm and fantastic so these are the four words that we need to replace with short, ordinary, terrible, and cool. Right, moving on to number one, our sentence. They were planning to spend a very special weekend at their summer house. So what is the correct response that we're going to put in here? They were planning to spend a very ordinary weekend at the summer house. Right, many people enjoy living in areas where there is a long winter season. All right, so we replace the words with the opposites, and the opposite of long is short. Moving on, I like to sleep in a warm bedroom at night, and the opposite of warm is cool. 
Alright, and I just got back from a fantastic vacation and the opposite of fantastic is terrible. Alright, and that's number 5 and that concludes it for lesson and the workbook for Unit 10E as we move on to Unit 10F. And have a very good day and goodbye. Right, and this is the answer case. Keep safe and see you on Unit 10F.